We just smoked way too much weed. Here we go. Oh, I'm really nervous about this, listeners, so thanks for bearing with me in this. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, on the phone right now, he's walking outside, but uh, comedian, actor, oh, actor first, comedian, writer, you know him from stage and screen. Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Negron is on our phones right Fuck now. Fuck. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Taylor. Thank you. Taylor. Thank you yes. so much for coming on our air. You, we talk about you all the time. You're the one guy we've we've been wanting to have on the show forever. We and, bugged you on Facebook. Yeah, and we we almost we we had one uh, better off dead cast member on just because we felt close to you. We had E.G. Daly on earlier this year. Who, who did you have? Uh, E.G. Daly. She sang the song. Yeah. Better. Oh off yeah, 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 no, no, she's great. She was also in that Paul Rubens movie. Oh right, yeah, right. The Paul. That's funny. No one else refers to it as the Paul Rubens movie. You, people usually say it is because I'm so old. I, I'm so old. I thought Rihanna was a Cajun rice dish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm old. I, I'm. I like. I sexed with the rotary phone. <laughs> but you and, wait. Um, yeah, Taylor, you're not. You, you look. You look amazing. You're not that old. You're not as old as my mom. So that's good. You know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but, yeah, but you know what. This little thirty, this little thirty-one waist of mine is a mom jean. Oh, <laughs> oh! This little thirty-one. How do you stay in such good shape? What's the Hollywood secret? We're all fat here in San Francisco. Teach us what's speak for we yourself. Do. Oh my God, you guys are fat. You know what I do is that I, I, I only eat what I want. You bastard! I, I never, eat, I never eat. Need. Oh, the people are calling. Hey, Taylor, please don't call us while Taylor Negron's on our phone, ladies and gentlemen. Taylor, I, here's what I want to ask you. I know, you, I know, you're probably not thinking of food right now because you just finished a big Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Hanukkah and everything. Yeah. But um, and you just flew into and you talked to us right after you flew in. So thank you so much. We won't keep you too long. But when you are in Hollywood, California, where you live, where do you suggest we eat late at night when we're drunk? Mm, okay. On, on, on Western below uh, Santa Monica Boulevard are these insane Korean ramen joints. Oh, really? Yeah, that are just like pure, you know, Kim cheap issues. Yeah, I do mean, you... they're just it's, they're really, really delicious, and they're ramen places, Korean based on 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 Western. Okay, now I, now, do you like spicy food? I I do. Okay. Um... Uh, the sriracha uh, sauce factory is going to have to shut down for a little while. How do you feel about that? Do you enjoy sriracha sauce? I never trusted it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> because, you know, there's a cock on it, right? Yeah. It sounds like you're right. There's, there's, a, there's a cock on it, and it seems like something that Frida Kahlo would have disposed of. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, where are you calling us from right now? I, I, am, I, am, I am right down here at City Hall in downtown Los Angeles at the CBS Seafood Restaurant. Oh really? I, I'm I'm on Ord and and Broadway down here in downtown LA. I'm I'm, I'm at the end of uh, Double Indemnity. Don't give it, don't out. give everybody oh, your right. exact location. They're <laughs> going to get swamped by our listeners. Yeah, we have. Some oh yeah, wouldn't that be? I'm sure all these people would get in a Bart and come here. <laughs> 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 but Taylor, Amtrak maybe. Taylor, um, uh, so I'll say thank you for taking the time to call us. Uh, downtown LA has changed quite a bit uh, in the last couple of years, hasn't it? Yeah, it's 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 actually kind of become a really fun place. I live in New York. Oh, you live in New York? Was, okay, I thought you lived in Los Angeles. No, I live in New York. I've lived in New York for the last five years. So, uh, when I really remarked to myself how different it is here, um, th th there's just a, a lot of people caring more about it. Okay, yeah, you ca <laughs> they care about their their neighborhoods. That, that's weird because when I was uh, growing up in LA, no one gave a shit about uh, downtown. There it was like stay away from there. But um, what, well, what 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 they, they moved Skid Row. Yeah, they moved Skid Row yeah. down down to Orange County. I, I noticed. Um, no, it's 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 you know the hipsters are here now. That's gross. So, Where do you live in? Hipster, the, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Go on. I, I I live in Silver Lake, which is the hey, it's called the hippest uh, neighborhood in America, which means everybody looks like a, a form of the Keebler elf. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Didn't you just say you live in New York? No, he has a house in Silver. Oh, Lake. I know. I I, I am. Um, yeah, but well, I've, I, I'm finally coming out of the closet. I am bi-coastal. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, Taylor, what brings you to New York? Are you working out there right now? I directed a one-man show uh, for Tom DeMena, a musical salute to Telly Savalas, called "Who Loves You, Baby." Right. And it and it ran for a long time in New York, and I got involved with the jazz music scene there. It sounds so 
show Village Vanguard, but I got involved with a lot of jazz musicians, and uh, because I have an accompanist, are you, F. Tell, are you dressed as a music. Keebler elf right now? <laughs> Sorry, no, you go know on. what? My, my my parents were. They said they have too much hydrogenated food oil. In <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where where in New York do you live? Do you don't live in Brooklyn? Do you? Uh, don't no, say Williamsburg. I live, I, I live. You remember that show Seinfeld? Oh no. yes. What's that? Well, the the guy who was the star of that, I live across the street from him. What? Oh my God! George Costanza. <laughs> yeah, you live <laughs> you live next to that racist Kramer. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I live I live on Central Park West in 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 in, in a great um situation. That's awesome. Oh, <clears throat> I want to go back and just touch on your career for a second because you know we love you from everything you've ever been in. You've been such a part of our our pop culture. Uh, you know, uh, blanket ephemera of, of just lexicon. Lexicon, you really influenced our lives. But can, can I just? Where did you start as a stand-up? Um, I started out as a, a cartoon model. Okay. Uh, for ha for Hanna Barbera. <laughs> oh, is and, this Snagglepuss? Is that you? No, no, I'm 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 Todd on the show Devlin. Is that for real? Yeah, you can Google me oh on and just put Devlin. Opening credits, and then you'll see the Jewish-looking guy with the big kind of aviator frames. That's me. I do know that show. I, I mean, they talk about that show still. They reference it because you know all the Hanna Barbera cartoons they made into Adult Swim cartoons. Yeah. that's seriously how you started out. <laughs> that was my first job, and it, and it came very, very easily. Wow! Oh my God, dude. That's, and that's, then I remember yeah, we just looked it up. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we, we're looking at it right now. It's crazy. That's me with the glasses and the big floppy hat. That's so cool! <laughs> oh my god! Wow! And you and you hear that music, yeah. and then I was on I was on the cover of uh, uh, coloring books and um, uh, bedspreads and drapes, and I thought, you know, this suits me. <laughs> <laughs> but so wow! So you were always just involved in the entertainment business. I was always involved, and then I, I did uh, stand up, and then you know, it was on the very bottom of stand up, and then went into improv. And then did the comedy store players um, in Venice? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't want you to go through the whole thing. I feel bad. I'm sorry, but we're watching. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's just, okay. it's just, it, 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 uh, comedy was my nature, right. and because I, I totally committed myself to it, 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 it just changed everything by committing to it. Okay, but. Uh... Yeah, you know, we always hear Taylor Negron started as, I think maybe because of Punchline, you're so known for Punchline, people think you started really as a, a stand-up. But uh, I did, I mean, I did I did improv, and then I, went, I did stand-up, and then I, you know, I started doing this in the 80s, I was, you know, during the bat time. When, yeah. When, when, it, when it was still kind of, um, you know, there was like pharmaceutical grade Coke around. Right, no, how, the Coke was good in Los Angeles in the 80s, yes? Well, apparently all the other people, I didn't do it because I, I'm too hyper, but I remember I faked doing cocaine. Now, so you were there during the time when all the music, you faked doing cocaine, bullshit. I saw you, I saw you in River's Edge. You look pretty coked out in that movie. I was. I was, also, I was coked out in, in, in the Stone Age, Tax Chicks. What? The Stone Age was later on. You were already off coke back then, by then, I thought. But no, it sounds like maybe he wasn't. <laughs> Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I, I, I made believe <laughs> the character was based on. This is why everybody likes my the characters because I really thought a lot about it. That this guy did a hit of coke, and then his boss said, "Will you stay an extra hour?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, oh, Al, Al has a question for you, my co-host Al Aloysius, Please. How you doing? I just need to know when you were filming the movie uh, Nothing But Trouble. At one point, you're like, "What the hell is this about?" Just out of curiosity. I. I I've, I felt like it was a dream. I remember once going to bed at night, not knowing whether it was a dream I was having. <laughs> <laughs> because oh, it man. was so, it was so, I mean, that was the first time I ever smelled crap. Oh, Eve, really? <laughs> really? On the yeah, set of Nothing But Trouble? Well, because of Tupac Shakur. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 get out of here. Are you serious? Oakland's owned. D D Digital Underground and Tupac Shakur, who was such a nice guy, was such a sweet boy. And, okay, but and I'm, yeah. you smoked crack with Tupac on the set of Nothing But Trouble? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a rumor. I was. Uh, <laughs> God, I was hoping you'd say yes. <laughs> no, I was. I was in my trailer spraying Blade everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Taylor, so okay, so we're going back a little bit. Uh, okay, and that, so you were always involved in, in stuff, and um, these certain directors like took a liking. Like you, you were in a, a lot of Amy Heckerling's work, and you were in 
two of the three Savage Steve Holland movies, why do these directors love you so much? Is it because you're awesome? Or is it because you had good... Yeah, totally. I'm awesome. Okay. Completely awesome. I'm 100% uh... awesome. And... and uh, I was in every movie that Steve Holland made, and I think I've been in every movie Amy made. Well, you know what? I think it's just like people who share the same point of view and the same comedy. I get, well, can, but, can you tell us a little? I mean, you know, as, as cult movie lovers we are here, this guy Savage, Steve Holland, he just came on the scene and then he like, kind of disappeared. And we, who was this guy? Was he, was he a weirdo? And what happened to him? He was, uh, he's still around. I mean, I, okay. I heard that he's, I signed a paper I was going to do a movie with him. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Fuck. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's so hard, it's so hard doing what I do because they always tell you they're going to do a movie and then you end up doing another movie. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. At speaking to that, was there ever going to be? Did you ever do a pilot or something that was a ta- going to be a Taylor Negron vehicle or a starring feature that we we just never saw? Yeah. Yeah, and why, why didn't that ever happen? Like, I mean, people have always, when I talk about you, because I talk about you when I get drunk and I go out to bars, I go, do you know this guy? But, like, you know, people always say, yeah, he, I've always wished he had his own TV show. What, 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 what were we going to do? Was it a sitcom or a talk show? Uh, one was a, uh, a half hour. NBC tried to do a half hour that was kind of junky, me and Louie Anderson. Oh, yeah. What? And I know, it was really funny. That sounds oh, amazing. God. Yeah, but it was before, you know, it was like, but, but then it was like the time before. Uh, Hollywood is always like a time before. Right, you yes. Have to be in, you have to be like in step, and it's hard to get in step because then you just get tired and you don't want to do it. I did, um, yeah, I did one, I just did one about five years ago called The Foreclosure. Okay. And it was about, it, it was great, but you know what? The deal, when the deal comes, if they want to own more than you do, you can't do it. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Uh, 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 Taylor Negron, you, you've known everyone. You just did this Telly Savalas play. Did you ever hang out with Telly in real life? Yeah, my, there was a, a, a lot of people I hung out with because my, they were they were here in L.A. And I remember once during a, my parents went to one of those traveling dinner parties and left me at his house. And uh, <laughs> at the Savalas residence, was a lot of lollipops there. Yeah, yeah. It was, he was he was just this, he was. Uh, a very nice man. He was a very, very nice man. He had millions of children. Yeah. And, <laughs> kind and, of like the man. You know, he, his whole career was based on gambling debts. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, he did Kojak because they said they were going to kill him if he didn't pay back the... Wow. wow. Sounds like a Nicolas Cage type situation. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I just did it the moss and I talked about um, when I was a kid... I was so afraid afraid that Charles Manson was going to get me. I mean, I started uh, out with Manson was my first the first big thing. Yeah, I I, 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 I went to high school in Simi Valley where uh, Charles Manson lived. You know, you, you I know. had I had a similar experience <laughs> with uh, Richard Ramirez when I was a little kid. Laying, oh, yeah. <laughs> laying awake at my grandparents' house, thinking he was going to come in. The yeah, I thought again. I thought the Night Stalker was going to kill me too. But then I, all my uh, like sisters and Mexican cousins around me were like, "But he's so handsome." <laughs> Remember how handsome the Night Stalker was? He's guapo way. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Negron, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did you not just work on a, a play based on, I mean, this is the anniversary of JFK's death. Didn't you not work on a play uh, about JFK? A play? Was it not a play? Oh, oh sorry. I, th- I tried to do my research. No, 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 no. I'm, um, I'm working on a play right now about Jacqueline Kennedy. Oh really? Is that uh, and uh, Jacqueline Kennedy? What uh, makes her appealing to you to work on a play? I mean, come on. You know that she that she really was, as she called herself, an Asiatic wife, mm-hmm. and and that she understood that she had to do what she needed to do in order to be a queen to a king. And she knew that he was a king, and so she behaved like a queen. And and they made what they called Camelot, and she was able to function. During his murder, yeah, and, I mean, and then and, and then go on and like marry like a, a shifty Greek, yeah, you know, and 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 get what she wanted. I mean, she, I, I, I love the idea that, that, that here is a person who was so super smart because women really interest me because they uh, somehow are acting dumber than they really are, and they should go back to acting smart again. Got yeah, you, yeah, got you. You know what else I hate? Shifty Greeks. <laughs> 
shifty Greek, I shouldn't say that on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. At least he didn't say gypsy. It's That's the real thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just have a couple more questions for you, Taylor. Um, I just want to. One of our listeners just commented, and they want to tell you that um, when uh, when Catherine Davis passed, you wrote a really great letter that uh, really took the focus back to her, and he he wants to thank you for that, and uh, that was really cool of you to do. Well, you 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 tell him from uh, me that really means a lot because that was uh, the thing I'm probably the most proud of. Oh, oh, really? You know, to, yeah, it was great because the media, you know, when something terrible like that happens in the event, like my friend Kathy, who kind of got murdered, they, 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 they shift the story and make it sensational and they leave out the victim. Right, because the, the guy who, who uh, took her life was a guy who was on TV, he was on Sons of Anarchy and all yeah, that Yeah, he stuff. was on the Sons of Anarchy and he mm-hmm. also dated Katy Perry. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. And it was like, you know, I've had enough of Katy Perry during this murder. We're going to go back to number one. Yeah. So, So. yeah, but yeah, all all of that stuff, and that's why Jackie Kennedy appeals to me and the really super smart people in the media like you guys who are out there who have to have a point of view. Right. And thank you. And people, a lot of people don't have a point of view right now. That's right. I agree with you. Um, Taylor, I'm going to let you go. I just have a couple more questions for you. I'm going to do a lightning round real quick. If anyone has a lightning round question, let's get it with Taylor. All right, Taylor, here we go real quick. Uh, One artist that uh, either from film or from visual art that all of our listeners, our young listeners, should go out and check out. Who should it be? Uh, Pierre Bernard. Okay. uh, Pierre Bernard. Who's the biggest stoner in Hollywood? Oh, my God. Well, of course... um, yeah, you know, Woody. Okay. Harrelson. Woody. Wow, Harrelson. Nice. <laughs> Have you ever smoked weed with Woody Harrelson? Yeah, and also Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Wait, you smoked weed with both of them at the same time? We played bongos with Matthew McConaughey. No, I play. I mean, I knew I did a movie with Matthew. Uh, look, I mean, I, I won this by doing crack with uh, two bucks. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Come okay, on. Okay, okay. okay. okay what's your, lightning What's your guilty? Re- what's your guilty pleasure? Fast food food. Uh oh my God! Uh, uh Fat Burger. Okay, what is the mo- the role that you're most proud of doing? Fat Burger's so good. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's really really good. The role <laughs> I am most uh, happy about is uh, Angels in the Outfield. Okay, Fuck yeah. Okay, one more question. Uh, is Chevy Chase? Everyone says he's a dick. True or false? <laughs> you know what? He's a long, soft dick. Okay. <laughs> um, what can we see? What are we What are we looking forward to in 2014 with Taylor Negron? You know, I'm going to be a, a, a lot in New York off-Broadway doing my show, The Unbearable Lightness of Being Taylor Negron. Nice. Oh, The That's Unbearable t- Lightness of Being Taylor Negron. Please bring it to San Francisco. If you're ever in San Francisco and you need anything, please, uh, of course, apply. Thank on you very much. Well, you know what? I go there and I perform at the Throckmorton for Lucy Mercer and all those. Oh, sweet. Uh, um, okay, wait. A couple more things. Can you say this is Taylor Negron? You're listening to Illogical Contraption Radio. This is Taylor Negron, and you're listening to Illogical Contraption Radio. All right, and Aloysius, you get the last question, buddy. Was okay. Barry Sobel hard to work with? Oh, Barry. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. Hold on. Be- quick backstory. Barry Sobel, who you worked with on Punchline, he came on our show and he totally sabotaged. He the was whole such show. a dick. He ruined everything. Do you I- remember him from Punchline? Well, I, yeah, I know Barry really well. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I like Barry. I, I've met his parents. His <laughs> parents, you can't Not really get annoyed with them. I remember but his. Yeah, I know, I'm, Barry's great. I mean, he's he's another fellow cartoon model. Oh, that's oh really? <laughs> that's funny. No, I remember Barry's mom uh, from uh, 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 the, the the Comedy Central commercials. Taylor, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Did you have a good Thanksgiving and a good Hanukkah? I had. I, yeah, I came up with a new one. It's called Gobble Tough. <laughs> well, Gobble Tough to you, Taylor. We're gonna throw a Mazel Tough cocktail at you later, yeah. buddy. And, and thank you very much. And I think someone's sister around here got the best end of the deal tonight. Okay. Oh, <laughs> let's see. <you> know, <laughs> All right. It means the world to us. You're on. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye, later. you guys. Later. Oh yeah. Thanks, PK, for hooking up that. Hey, oh, we had a call. <laughs> Illogical Contraption Radio. Oh, you're on the air. Like- it's time for news of the weird. Yeah, perfect timing. Oh my God, we just talked to Taylor Negron right now. He just called, oh, I love dude. Taylor Negron. <laughs> Ava, you always call while the guest is on. <laughs> I'm, you guys have to tell me when to call, you know. Or you could just listen to the show.